Misfire DTCs, or diagnostic trouble codes, are among the top 10 DTCs that professional technicians have to deal with. Today, I'll share some troubleshooting tips that will help you quickly and easily isolate the cause of this common concern. Hi, and welcome to the January 2019 edition of The Trainer. You know, the ECM, or Engine Control Module, has a relatively simple job. Its primary role is to make sure that the catalytic converter stays happy and healthy. It does this by maintaining and regulating the feed gases that are allowed to enter the converter. Now, should these feed gases get out of a very narrow range of acceptability, the catalytic converter will overheat, and that can lead to damage to the substrate and an increase in emissions. That's one reason that correcting even a minor misfire is so important. So how does the ECM know the engine is misfiring? Most OEMs monitor the crankshaft position sensor signal and look for the unexplained variations. If the crank changes speed unexpectedly, the ECM knows that one or more of the engine cylinders didn't produce their fair share of power. In other words, a misfire occurred. The majority of misfire DTCs are in the family of two-trip diagnostic trouble codes. All that means is that the ECM wants to see the same problem occur at least twice before it decides to turn on the mill. Now the first time the ECM detects the misfire, it will note the load and RPM conditions that were present at the time it discovered the problem and it will store that information as a pending code in Global Mode 7. If it sees the same misfire occur under similar conditions, it will then mature the code, moving it to Mode 3, turning on the mill, and recording freeze frame data. There is one exception. If the misfire is severe enough to pose an immediate threat to the health of the converter, the mill will flash on and off to warn the driver to cease operation until the problem can be corrected. Now the ECM may or may not be able to tell us which cylinder or cylinders has a problem, and it can only provide us with clues as to what's causing the problem to begin with. It's still up to us to figure out the ultimate cause and make the proper correction. Let's start our focus with the single cylinder misfires. What do you think could cause a single cylinder to not contribute its fair share? The answer is in the combustion process. Three basic things have to be present. Fuel, ignition or spark, and compression, as represented by this triangle and the three have to happen in the right amount and at the right time. Any variation from the ideal will affect the quality of cylinder combustion and the resulting power produced by that cylinder. Well, that's easy enough, isn't it? Just test fuel, spark, and compression and see which one is missing. I like to start by connecting my scan tool in global OBD2 mode retrieving the DTCs and taking a look at the freeze frame data associated with the code or codes. I want to know as much about the conditions under which the misfire occurred as I can. Did the misfire occur at idle or was the engine running at cruise speed? Was the engine overheating, still cold, or at normal operating temperature? Was the engine under severe load or hardly working at all. I especially want to look at the total fuel trims for each bank. Total fuel trim is the total of short-term and long-term trims. If I notice that there's a fairly large positive correction in total fuel trim on the bank containing the misfiring cylinder, I'm going to start leaning towards the fuel side of that triangle. If, however, there's very little or no change to total fuel trim, I'm going to lean more towards the ignition side. Next, I take a look at Mode 6 data. 
on any vehicle that uses a controller area network, I can see the misfire counters in mode 6 and see if there are any other weak cylinders being detected by the ECM, even if a code has not been recorded or set yet. With this information in hand, I'll refer to my service information system to see what it may have to offer. The first step is to take a look at technical service bulletins to see if there are any flashes or component updates related to my customer's concern. Then I'll check to see if there are any pattern problems using databases like Mitchell One's SureTrack, IATN, or Identifix. Now keep in mind, I'm not looking for a silver bullet here. I'm looking for diagnostic direction. If I do find something in my online research that is something similar to what I'm dealing with with my customer, then I'm going to test and verify that that is indeed the cause of the problem before I execute the repair. No parts cannons here, guys. Now the next step I'm gonna take is to actually start doing some general performance-based testing. And one of the things that I like to do right off the top is a relative compression test to get a quick gauge of the overall mechanical health of the engine. I can perform this test in a few different ways. Some manufacturers have relative compression or cylinder contribution tests included in their scan tool data and may be accessible using your scan tools enhanced mode. I prefer to grab my U-scope and do a quick check right at the battery. Now if I do discover an issue in the relative compression test, I'll continue to use my scope and a variety of pressure sensors or transducers to further investigate just what the mechanical issue might be. I realize that some of you watching don't have that capability, so you'll have to rely on the more traditional methods of cylinder compression testing and cylinder leak down testing to help isolate those causes. Now, if I'm convinced that there isn't a mechanical issue, it's time to move on to the other two sides of the triangle, fuel and ignition. Sometimes that can be as simple as swapping parts from the misfiring cylinder to one that is known good to see if the misfire moves with the change. With a scope though, I can check both by looking at the secondary ignition pattern. There's a lot of information in this one waveform if you know what you're looking for. Now, what if you're dealing with multiple cylinder misfires? Well, then you have a few other factors you need to take into account. Think about what the cylinders that have the issue have in common. Is it a DIS ignition system and the cylinders share the same coil? Are they on the same bank of the engine? Do they have anything in common with a variable valve timing system or cylinder deactivation system that may be the clue you need to solve the problem? Well, I hope you found today's video helpful. If you want additional resources, I encourage you to go to the Motor Age Magazine YouTube homepage and check out the trainer playlist. Till next month, I'm Pete Meyer. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.